Hi everyone, I'm Andama Primary School. It's Adam here from Real Schools, and I just wanted to, I guess, follow up from our professional learning day that we uh, we spent together not so long ago with a quick little video to summarise for you not only the key content of the day, but the way that you work through that content. Uh, it's important that we have a little bit of a resource as we move forward so that the professional learning day doesn't have any sort of a, a drop and run edge to it, because indeed it was the start of a three year journey of us working together and I, I just can't tell you how excited I am about that kicking off. So the first session of the day, we really started to take a really close look at school culture. What is school culture all about and how it is that we can begin to focus on it? So what we did was define it first of all, and we said that school culture is pretty simply the set of behaviours that are both encouraged and the ones that tolerate in our school. And we need to be really clear about what those behaviours are and how they're serving what might be any sort of stated mission or vision for the school. We then looked at how we could maybe start to gather those sets of behaviours in any sort of consistent way, because what we agreed on was that consistency was important. We looked at two key levers for that. Number one is developing your own model for the the way that you actually demonstrate those behaviours and make decisions. So I want to acknowledge that it's one of those weird, ethereal, out there kind of activities, but it is the work that really effective leaders are able to do. And if you're able to look at the way that you as a team, or the way that you individually are making decisions and have something to reflect upon, then that's when you're able to do some really act active and you know, meaningful reflection as you move forward. We also looked at your leadership metaphors, so your story for what it what the way that you're going to lead. And we looked at one of those things that even if you are in an administration role or a student support role, whether maybe it's a teaching role or a leadership role, it doesn't matter because in a school, your behaviours contribute quite equally to culture. Therefore, having a story about the way that you're going to lead in terms of building those behaviours when you're working specifically with young people, but also with their parents and with their families is really important. And it's great to be able to understand. And it was just fantastic for me to be able to see so much head nodding around the room of people saying, you know what, that is the way that you work. When we're able to put that odd creative time into the way that we're building school culture. After smoko time, we had a little bit of a look at human behaviour. We had a really close look at what human behaviour is all about with the view that instead of telling you that you know, using some sort of hypothetical construct that if you do this, the students will do that because we know that that's not the reality of working in a school. What we did was try to put in your hands the, the models and the frames and the, the rules by which we all learn to behave and then allow you to contextualise it. So a couple of the key things we looked at there were uh, the whole idea of my golden rule around behaviour, that every behaviour has a meaning and a context, a meaning in that it's a young person trying to get, avoid or achieve something and a context in that it occurs very specifically to the environment, to the people around that behaviour. So uh, one of the things we really need to remember is that you, know, you as the teachers have basically supreme control over that context. So start to think about the way that you're delivering stuff, not just what the strategy is that you're delivering. And would delivering it in a different way, from a different position, from a different perspective, in a different way, would that make a difference? And would you not then need to throw out what could be a really clever piece of strategy? So thinking a lot about meaning and context, and we then had a good look at Jay Lang's t-shirts. And I know that resonated with quite a few people, the idea of identifying the, the motivation behind behaviour, which is uh, about exploring whether our kids are those help me kids, those look at me kids, those make me kids, or those you'll pay kids, in which case we need to change hats a bit, take the teaching hat off and start to put the agent hat on. And then in the afternoon, we had a really good look at restorative practices and started to think about whether this could be a pathway forward for you in terms of one, not only building great relationships, two, resolving conflict and addressing bullying, but three, underpinning the, the kind of culture that you're trying to build at Mandama. Um, I guess when we're talking about restorative practices, it's important to reflect upon those three really important instruments of restorative practices. Number one is those operating domains. When we're trying to balance firmness and fairness, the four boxes with two, with, four, and not in it, and knowing that what we're trying to achieve is to practice with some sort of consistency in the with box where we have both high expectations and high levels of support. Another of those instruments would be the restorative continuum, which is about just thinking about that, that transition from informal through to formal. And one of the things that I 
genuinely love about RP is that what it allows us to do is with some sort of consistency deal with the really low level stuff at the informal end as well as at the formal end. So the five steps we had along there were those effective statements, chuck in a feeling, effective interactions, a quick one to three minute interaction, a small impromptu conference for my kryptonite, those year six girls, that I can get that conversation done, P3, P3, F3, and uh, we can actually start to make sure that we've got some structure and some input some you know from the students but also some as some decent outcome we looked at our large group options as we get towards the more formal end and getting everybody involved and there are circles so remember your check-in circles your check-out circles your preparation circles your response circles and your learning circles and we've got our formal conferencing at the right at the very formal end we're going to have a little bit of a look at that as we move forward down the track and then the last instrument of rp is about you know really having a look at using those restorative questions. Uh, remembering not only that a quest, the questions for you in most situations are not going to be a script. So you don't need to get them out and read them word by word. You can use them creatively and in fact I would encourage you to do that. And the only thing you need to remember is the function of those questions. That they're, they're really about taking any situation and moving it in a time appropriate way from past to present to future. So it's a bit about what we talked about during the day, um, but the, the, video, the footage that you've been looking at now is far more about how you engage on the day, and I don't want you to forget that. I don't want you to forget that the momentum that, that comes from uh, the professional learning day is about how many of those types of conversations you're able to generate from now on and indeed throughout 2015. So what I want you to do is start to have a think, start to have a talk about how you can make sure that those conversations start to happen, how you can take important pieces of content, important important pieces of practice, important bits of strategy, and how you can deploy them in your unique context. It's just so important. And then the last part of this video is the really fun bit that many of you would probably be hoping I'd forgotten, and it's your 15 second commitments. So this is critically important, and I hope that when you have a look at this, that you know, well, I hope that you've been able to take some steps forward in the commitments that you made. Uh, perhaps you've been able to take a few more, and that's fantastic. And if you haven't, then it's not time to get all down on yourself and uh, you know, you know, have other people you know, tell you off and slap you across the wrists. Okay, it's time to say, let's do it. Let's get going. Uh, because what we know about practice is that it doesn't change in isolation, it doesn't change individually, it changes collectively. And when we get that change in collective practice, we're going to get the change in culture that you're all looking for. We, what we know is that we can, if we can wrap a really fantastic relational and productive culture around your school, that you'll be more effective and you'll also be less stressed. And that's got to be a good thing. So look guys, I can't wait to come back and work with you again. I, uh, I'm really excited about the way that you engaged on the day and the momentum that we might be able to build around getting back to what's really important in schools and education. So uh, I'll talk to you again real soon. I am going to identify one behaviour and use a specific strategy to change that behaviour and I'm not going to engage in power struggles with my students. I'm going to focus on one behaviour and be consistent and persistent and hope that it pays off. Thank you. The one behaviour and work on it. When working with my t-shirt children, deciding which domain I'm actually working in, thinking about that and what strategies I can do from there. I'm going to have more conversations about the how and why, just not the what. My most challenging student, I'm going to work on one behaviour at a time. I'm going to have a look at the different t-shirts the kids in my class are wearing and I'm going to respond, reassess the way that I respond to them. I'm going to learn a lot more about positive priming and how I can use that in our school. I'm going to have a check-in circle and a check-out circle beginning and end of the week. When my kids act up, I'm going to start to think about what t-shirt they're wearing and why they are acting the way they are. Reflect on the way that I have discussions with children and also hold check-in circles regularly. I'm going to look much more closely at negative behaviour and actually look for meaning within that. I'll be more intentional working with the children rather than for, which I often do. I'm going to repair harm and focus on relationships. Um, when I go back to class teaching, I'll focus on, I think, asking kids to do a metaphor um, that kind of reflects how they feel and who they are because I think that really resonated with me and it gave a good picture of um, people and what they believe. I'm going to be doing more priming behaviour where I'm working on, working on the positives of what I want rather than saying any negatives unit planning meeting on Monday. We're going to have a look at our homework and have a bit of a rethink about that. I'm going to get more proactive with my parents. So um, on early next week, I'm going to ring all the parents to help out at the athletics carnival, rather than just running a um, an ad in the.
use later. I'm going to change my priming. When my little guy walks out at recess time with his little truck, I'm going to change what I say to him. Not, don't play with rocks, don't play with sand, don't run into people. I'll change the way I word it. Hi, I'm going to try and use a bit more positive language, like when kids are on task and you know, getting them to stay on task and what you're talking about. Sort of positive language. I'm going to attempt to identify behaviours and then act rather than reacting to behaviours. How are we going to reflect on learning within my classroom and myself, how I teach and learn? I am going to work on priming the kids' behaviour before I react to the things that they do. Hi, I'm going to activate my Twitter account and uh, do some following of some influential people in terms of behaviour modification and the sort of things that we learnt today. Try not to slip into the two box as often as I do. I'm going to concentrate on positive speak and not put negative ideas in their head by telling them not to do something. I'm going to open a Twitter account and um, follow some educational leaders. I'm also going to look at the check-in circles as well. It's your um, two truths and a lie strategy and um, also the check-in circle. Sounds like a great idea. I am going to not engage in um, that tennis back and forth power struggles with the kids that wear the um, make me t-shirt. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going to confront um, bad behaviour with a discussion rather than just growling and asking them to stop. I'm going to help teachers to identify which t-shirt the children are wearing and start to work on one behaviour at a time.